Everybody, or almost everybody, is familiar with the story in the Bible of the Good Samaritan who stops to help a wounded man lying by the side of the road. And most of us would like to believe we would do the same. We'd also like to believe that a young college student like David Cash would have been Good Samaritan enough to have stepped in and done something, anything, when he saw another young man, his best friend, assaulting a little girl who minutes later his best friend raped and murdered. But for the past few months, David Cash has been the subject of nationwide outrage over his decision to walk away and not even report the rape and murder of seven-year-old Sharice Iverson. The 19-year-old Cash, a sophomore at the University of California at Berkeley and a nuclear engineering major, has become an outcast on campus. We want Cash out! We want Cash out! Many of his fellow students there are demanding the university expel him. They are infuriated not only by his failure to save Sharice Iverson, but also by remarks he made this summer on a Los Angeles radio program. How much am I supposed to, to sit down and cry about this? I mean, ha I mean, let's be reasonable here. Is my life supposed to halt for, like, for days, weeks, and months on end? And if that weren't bad enough, he added this. The simple fact remains, I do not know this little girl. I do not know starving children in Panama. I do not know, you know, people that die of disease in Egypt. Some people have called you the, the bad Samaritan. You think that's an appropriate name? No, most certainly not. They're, they're, these names that people call me, I've been called the antithesis of today's teens, you know, bad Samaritan, a, t a, a textbook sociopath. Uh, I've been called it all. David Cash's trouble started just before he enrolled at Berkeley. One night last year, his father took him and his best friend Jeremy Strohmeyer, seen together in this home video, to a casino near Las Vegas. Surveillance cameras there show the two boys playing video games at 3.30 in the morning. Strohmeyer then spots Sharice Iverson, whose father was gambling nearby. The cameras record Sharice walking into a women's restroom followed by Jeremy Strohmeyer, and then, a minute later, by David Cash. When I entered the bathroom, Jeremy Strohmeyer and, and Sharice Iverson were throwing paper towels at each other. You know, they were just playing, you know, seemed to twist around. And it came to a point where Jeremy grabbed her and took her into a stall, to one of the bathroom stalls. I went into the adjacent stall, looked over, and Jeremy was restraining her with his left hand over her stomach and his right hand over her mouth. And she was trying to scream. He was muffling her screams. Cash says he then heard Strohmeyer threaten Sharice Iverson, saying, shut up or I'll kill you. You know, I tapped him on the head, you know, because it was completely out of character. And he didn't, really res he, didn't, you know, he didn't really respond to me. He gave me kind of a blank stare. So, you know, in my opinion, you know, it was like time for me to get out of there. Why? You know, well, when it... 18-year-old male grabs a 7-year-old child, you know, that's not, that's not a position I want to be in. Based on what I saw, I mean, it wasn't something I wanted to stick around and you know, see what would materialize. Did you say to him, Jeremy, come on, stop, let's go? I was giving him a look as if, you know, you know, that he shouldn't be doing that. But you never said, stop, get out of here, this is wrong. Verbally, I did not say that. But my body language certainly suggested it. According to the surveillance cameras, David Cash walked out of the bathroom about two minutes after he entered. Strohmeyer was seen leaving some 22 minutes later. But Sharice Iverson never left. Her body was discovered in the bathroom. She had been sexually assaulted and strangled. What did he say to you when he came out? He, he immediately confessed. Confessed? Yes. What did he say? He looked at me and said, I, I killed her. Just like that? Just like that. After Strohmeyer confessed to Cash that he had killed Cherise Iverson, they went to other casinos where they played slot machines and rode roller coasters for several hours before heading back home to California. Did you think to turn him into the police? The thought crossed my mind, but, but I didn't act on it. Why? I know that his day of reckoning is coming. I didn't, I didn't want to be the one that, that turned him in. You felt that was more important than to report a murderer? Even though he had told me that he had committed murder, it was really hard for me to fathom Jeremy 
as a quote unquote murderer. But he told you he was. I understand that, but he's, he's also my best friend. You know, we're taking AP English together. But after Cash and Strohmeyer returned home, friends who had seen the surveillance tapes played on the local news tipped off police. Strohmeyer was charged with murder and three weeks ago, to avoid the death penalty, he pled guilty. He is now serving life in prison without parole. But David Cash, who watched as Strohmeyer physically assaulted a little girl just minutes before she was murdered, has not been charged with any crimes. He's evil! He's evil! Yolanda Manuel is Sharice Iverson's mother. She is estranged from Sharice's father and was not at the casino with him the night of the murder. She has collected 20,000 signatures urging prosecutors to charge Cash with a crime. He seen Jeremy Strohmeyer put his hands over her mouth and carried her in the bathroom. He seen it. Anytime you stand and you look at something happening to anybody, not only a child, any human being, a dog, a cat, or whatever, you seen that happen. So you a murder within yourself. You still got the blood of my babies on your hand. You think he is an accessory to murder? Yes, he is. I think he should be charged with accessory to the murder of my child because he could have did something to stop it. He didn't do anything. Peggy Lean is the deputy district attorney in Nevada, whose office made the decision not to bring charges against Cash. How would you characterize the, the conduct of David Cash in this case? Morally reprehensible. And it, it's uh, unfathomable that someone could see uh, conduct of that nature and not take some form of action. Why then didn't your office charge him with any crime? Moral reprehensibility isn't a crime. Uh, you have to participate, do something affirmatively to assist in the commission of a crime. Uh, watching and failing to report, regrettably, is not a crime. But, I mean, isn't there something wrong with that? I mean, you've got someone who could have saved a child's life and who did nothing about it, and yet there's no way to hold him accountable. There may not be any way to hold him legally accountable. He's certainly accountable in the court of public opinion, and he's certainly accountable ultimately in how people respond to his uh, morally bankrupt behavior. We asked David Cash to explain his behavior to a group of fellow students we assembled on the campus of Berkeley, and he agreed. 